it was the 21st of December 1938 when Hendrik Hörsen, the captain of the Irvin and Johnson trawler Nareen, made their last haul in about 70 meters of water off the mouth of the Chilimna River. In the net was a large blue fish with strange fins and an extra bit on the end of its tail. 31-year-old Marjorie Courtney Latimer was curator of the East London Museum. Hendrik Hörsen was in the habit of saving anything unusual from his catches for her. Next morning, sorting through the pile of sharks, rays, and other specimens, she found the blue fish. It was the most beautiful fish that I'd ever seen. It was the most beautiful blue, and I had never seen anything like it. After having got the fish back to the museum, she tried to identify it, but without success. So she sent a letter with a sketch of the fish to Professor J.L.B. Smith at Rhodes University in Grahamstown. It was trawled off Chalumna coast at about 40 fathoms. It is coated in heavy scales, almost armor-like. The fins resemble limbs and are scaled right up to a fringe of filament. The spinous dorsal has tiny white spines down each filament. It did not take him long to decide that it was a living fossil, a coelacanth. Coelacanths were thought to have been extinct for 70 million years. Finding a live coelacanth was a little like finding a live dinosaur walking around the Karoo. Smith named the fish Latimeria chilimni in her honor and the river where it was found. As the East London Museum did not have a freezer or preserving tank large enough for the fish, its internal organs were discarded. A second intact specimen was needed. By the late 1940s, no more coelacanths had been found. Smith supposed it was because they lived in some more remote part of the Western Indian Ocean. So he had a poster designed and distributed in various islands in the Mozambique Channel, offering a reward of £100 for a coelacanth. In December 1952, Eric Hunt cabled J.L.B. Smith from Anjouan in the Comora Islands to tell him that a coelacanth had been caught there. Fearing that the fish would not be properly preserved, Smith enlisted the help of Dr. D.F. Milan, then Prime Minister. Milan approved the use of an Air Force airplane to take Smith to the Comoros to fetch the fish. Since 1952, more than 180 coelacanths have been caught in the Comoros, but not again in South Africa. Then, on the 28th of October 2000, three amateur divers, Peter Fenter, Peter Tim, and Etienne Leroux, were exploring Jessa Canyon at Sedwana Bay at a depth of 104 meters. Nearing the end of their dive, Fenter saw a large eye reflecting the beam of his underwater torch. Underneath an overhang, he saw a large blue fish. He was convinced it was a coelacanth. He summoned Tim, and they saw two more. A month later, they planned another dive, this time taking a video camera. They found three more coelacanths at 108 meters and filmed them. We had at last discovered coelacanths living in South African waters. Just as the very first discovery of the coelacanth sparked an explosion of research and scientific endeavor, the first living coelacanth to be found in South African waters has fueled the creation of the multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary South African coelacanth conservation and genome resource program. The program was launched in April 2002 at Sedwana Bay by the Department of Arts, Culture, Science and Technology through the National Research Foundation. Minister Dr. Benin Gubani explains why the South African government got involved in the project. Well, because it's one of the major issues in history today. Now, this offers us a connection with the past, going back to the age of the dinosaurs. I mean, very few countries have such an opportunity in history. We, we see this as a, a flagship science program. So we want to interest our scientists. We want to excite our young people to see careers in science. We want school kids to understand science through this project. And the people also to be aware that they sit in the part of the world with incredible treasures. The first expedition took place off the Sedwana coast on the research ship Algoa in April 2002. The program, led by the South African Institute of Aquatic Biodiversity, is committed to addressing several important issues, particularly in marine biodiversity research and in building science capacity in a diversity of institutions. The program has drawn national and international expertise and resources to coelacanth research. It includes involvement with the SADC community and is developing partnerships with sister organizations. 
Well, you know, I think it's quite a very impressive uh, venture. Uh, right from the beginning, I thought that it would be worthwhile instead of doing the research only in South African water, but extend the research down south into the into the Mozambique. The program also focuses on marine conservation through the need to protect not only the rare silica but all marine environments. It also contributes significantly to the public awareness of science, particularly in the education of our young people who will be responsible for the future of our natural heritage. Since the launch of the program, successful expeditions have seen the discovery of new colonies of coelacan and through the combined efforts of a number of disciplines have begun to answer a myriad of questions vital to establishing the framework for the conservation efforts by KwaZulu-Natal Wildlife. Perhaps this remarkable blue fish will still be around for the next 400 million years. We have the infrastructure, we have excellent scientists here, an excellent research system. So it would be absolute dereliction of our duty if we did not pursue this new find with all the vigor that we can command.